Welcome to Excel 2010 statistics video number five. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, click on the link below the video. Hey, we're on the sheet data sets. And before we jump into data analysis, looking at pivot tables and sorting, we want to talk about how data has to be set up. Here's a little data set, and we'll see little data sets like this and big data sets later in the class. Um, and it's got to be set up a certain way. So we have our variable names, or field names, or column headers, or column labels. I have all these different terms here because um, these terms get thrown around depending on what context you're in or what field you're in. Column headers, you know, most of us laymen just say, hey, yeah, that's a column header. Variables, you'd hear that in uh, statistics or math. Field names, that's what you hear when you're doing databasing. Column labels, that's what Excel calls them for when we're creating pivot tables. Whatever name you use, you got to have a name at the top of the column that says, hey, what kind of data goes in this column? Autos, sales. Hot, if for employees, you could have first name, last name, hire date, uh, starting salary, etc. All right, so data sets always have to have that at the top. And then each row is called a record or an observation. So in databasing, this is called one record, right? On this date, we sold this car for this much. In business, it's called a transact, or in accounting, it's called a transaction. In this statistics class in chapter one, which we haven't gotten to yet, they'll call it an observation, right? Hey, on this day, I saw that they sold a Honda for that much. So those are two very important uh, aspects of how a data set is set up. Other names, st in statistics, they say, oh, this is a data set. In a database and in Excel, they call it a table, right? Uh, another very important number three, you have to have blank uh, rows or columns all the way around the data set. You absolutely never want to do this, like put a note. Or oftentimes people do financial calculations off to the side. You never have anything touching the data set. The reason why is because when you go to sort or do pivot tables, it, they won't work. So if your data has some data right there, it won't work. Don't all the way around. There's like a sea of blanks. Or you can have the, these are called Excel row headers, three, four, five. This data set could also be touching here, and the ABC would be fine. It's just not data in the other cells. Uh, number four, you don't want to have any blank field names. Uh, when you go to do a pivot table or sorting, it just flat out uh, it doesn't work very well. Control Z there. Uh, and finally, in uh, chapter one of our book, they're going to call these elements. Now, this is just like a unique list. Um, oh, so we have a huge f f uh, list here, right? We have lots of repeats. But if I want to do any summary calculation, like add up all the sales for Honda, or count how many Hondas there are here, I just need to list it once and then do my calculation right here. So some of the terms for a unique list like this are elements. That's what the textbook will use in, in database in its primary key or unique identifier. Okay, A listing of each item of interest only once so you can make some summary calculation. All right? So that's how a data has to be set up. Now in our next video, we're going to do data analysis and then a couple videos forward we'll talk about cell references. We'll see how to do this exact calculation here. All right, so that's how data is uh, set up and some terminology for in statistics and databasing. In our next video, we'll do data analysis. See you next video.